It's day 19 of Russian invasion of Ukraine and the Ukrainian resistance is holding up. Air raid alerts have, uh, have been sounded in 19 of 24 Ukrainian regions. Russia has attacked the suburbs of the capital city of Kiev. A town council of Brovary has been killed in the fighting. A school in the city of Mykolaiv was hit by Russian missile. Russia has targeted key Ukrainian facilities, especially Ukrainian air defense. Russians have destroyed several Ukrainian airfields. Baishev village of Ukraine also came under Russian missile attack where multiple houses and buildings were damaged. Ukrainian forces have shot down four planes and three choppers on Sunday. Important about today, about war. We will win. Glory to Ukraine. We were able to evacuate nearly 120,000 people using humanitarian corridors. The main task now is Mariupol. Our diplomatic effort is focused on aid to reach the city. Take a look at this ground report from my colleague Serhi Miranko. As, as, as the Russian army was claimed that they will uh, take Kiev in a few days, Today is 19 days, and we are still working. We are still have what to food, what to eat, what to drink, etc., etc. I just want to mention that it was not, not only one attack on the Obalon region. There was also an attack uh, on an aircraft okay. uh, factory, one of the oldest, uh, by the famous uh, Ukrainian uh, avia, uh, air constructor Antonov. Okay. There's a guy who constructed the Maria, the biggest, biggest aircraft in the world, were also destroyed by the Russian in Gostomel. Uh, more than that, in Rivne, there also was an attack uh, on a uh, on a TV tower, uh, just to close, uh, just to destroy it and to close uh, the Ukrainian networking, TV networking for the okay. real information. Uh, at the same time, in Melitopol where uh, cruelly uh, Russian troops uh, steal, uh, stole the mayor of mm -hmm. Melitopol. They announced another woman who will be the mayor, who will take his leads, his authority. Mm -hmm. And she announced that, don't worry, people, Russian uh, digital TV channels will come soon, so retranslate your TV sets. Mm -hmm. So what we see over for right now, uh, Russians have uh, several ideas, several tactics how to invade Ukraine. As, as I said before, they're taking the hostages in the civilian villages and uh, they're covering them as a shield uh, against the Ukrainian Ukrainian army and our forces. That's why uh, we are still on the same position as the Russians, but our air forces attacked their backs to destroy their um, supporting, like uh, gasoline, like uh, food, etc., etc., etc. Meanwhile, if you, as you know, uh, Russian claims that they are open uh, water uh, for the Crimea Peninsula, and what we see for right now, they're destroying, they're destroying the Mariupol. We're not talking about the humanitarian corridors right now. They right. destroy the city it's in a circle, and their main idea is just to control the road, uh, which they will use to support Crimea Peninsula yeah. and people who are starving there since they invaded in 2014. Hmm. This isn't the situation for right now. Right. You're saying that the attacks are only widened. And this comes even as parallelly talks have been initiated. And, and that's what it appears that Ukrainians are now holding on to hope because parallelly we believe that on both sides there seems to be some kind of headway uh, or some kind of agreement. But what is that that hasn't been established? But uh, talks are currently underway parallelly even while Russia widens its attack in several other parts of Ukraine. Ukraine claims to have busted Russia's invis invincibility myth, mocking the claim that Russia could capture Kiev in two days. Commander-in-Chief of Ukraine Army has called the invincibility of Putin's army a mere myth. The army chief pointed out to multiple attacks by the Ukrainian army to shoot down several Russian military tanks and choppers. Ukraine's military chief said that in the vicinity of SL Kharkiv, Ukraine, an anti-aircraft missile system, or TOR, shot down Russian UAV on the altitude of 3,000 200 meters. Here are some of the images of how Ukrainians hit back at the Russian military vehicles. In the last two weeks, Ukraine has shot down many Russian choppers and aircraft. 
In Kharkiv, visual show Russian aircraft being shot down by Ukrainian army. In Mykolaiv, a Russian jet was shot down by Ukraine. The jet turned into ashes within minutes. In Mykolaiv, Ukrainian army captured Russian military tanks and set them on fire. On the other hand, a suspected Russian drone was shot down in the outskirts of Kiev. In Ochakov city in southern Ukraine, a Russian plane was shot down by the Ukrainian army. And in Rovarsky, a Russian army tank was set ablaze after the Ukrainians captured the military vehicle there. We spoke to Ukrainian journalist Anna Basova about the expectations on the fourth round of peace talks between both the countries. How, you know, uh, the, the talks that are likely to take place in a couple of hours, we are told this is the video conferencing round. What are key expectations from this round of talks? And if there is forward movement, if at all, would that only be uh, once the heads of state, uh, President Zelensky, if and when President Zelensky and President Putin talk? Uh, first of all, um... I don't expect uh, these talks to take place. I mean, between our president and uh, Putin, is uh, ha it's uh, hardly possible that he comes out of his uh, bomb shelter in Ural, where he's told to be hiding uh, from everyone, from from the world. Uh, secondly, uh, the conditions uh, Ukraine uh, will insist on. As Russia ups the ante against Ukraine, President Zelensky continues to lead from the front. On Sunday, Zelensky visited a military hospital in Kiev to meet the wounded soldiers. Zelensky can be seen clicking pictures with the wounded soldiers who are being treated in the hospital. Reiterating his demand for closing the skies of Ukraine, Zelensky warned that it is just a matter of time before Russian missiles hit the NATO territory. Zelensky has also said that Russia will begin a war and Moscow is not going to bat an eyelid before using Nord Stream 2 as a weapon. Ukraine has also insisted on talks directly between the two presidents, Zelensky and Putin, saying that only a meeting between the top leaders could bring peace. Устріла міжнародного центру миротворчості та безпеки загинуло 35 людей. Ще 134 людини отримали поранення. Там не відбувалось нічого, що могло би загрожувати території Російської Федерації. І всього лише у 20 кілометрах звідти кордони НАТО. В минулому році я чітко попереджав лідерів НАТО, якщо не буде жорстких превентивних санкцій проти Російської Федерації, вона піде війною. Ми були праві. Я говорив протягом довгого часу, північний потік – це зброя, яка ударить по всій Європі. Тепер це очевидно. І зараз я повторюю знову, якщо ви не закриєте наше небо, то це лише питання часу, коли російські ракети впадуть вже на вашу територію, на територію НАТО. На домівки громадян країн НАТО. Russian airstrikes in a military airbase in western Ukraine has led to multiple casualties. Over 30 people have lost their lives. As many as 30 rockets at the base. Here is a report on the deadly air attack. A Russian airstrike hit a large military base in western Ukraine on Sunday, extending the conflict into new areas. At least 35 people died and more than 130 were wounded, according to regional governor Maxim Kozitsky. He said Russian planes fired around 30 rockets at the facility, but some were intercepted. Reuters was unable to verify his statement. Britain said the incident at the extensive Yavoriv base, just 15 miles from the border with NATO member Poland, marked a significant escalation. It also heightens fears that Russia's invasion of Ukraine could spill over into neighboring NATO member states. U.S. President Joe Biden has previously said NATO would defend every inch of its territory if that happened. Intensive Russian attacks have been reported around the country. 
in Cherniv, around 100 miles northeast of Kyiv. Firefighters rescued residents from a burning building after heavy shelling, verified video from Ukraine's emergency services showed. Moscow denies targeting civilians. Ukraine also reported renewed airstrikes on an airport in the west and attacks on the southern town of Mykolaiv, where officials said nine people were killed. Ukraine's human rights monitor said Russia used phosphorus bombs in an overnight attack on the town of Popazna in the eastern Luhansk region. Reuters has not verified those reports. In the southern port city of Kherson, more than 400 people were detained by Russia's National Guard as they protested against Russia's occupation of the area, according to Ukraine's military high command. Despite the violence, both Russia and Ukraine said they thought progress could be made at peace talks, 18 days after Moscow launched what it calls a special military operation. A Ukrainian delegate said Russia was beginning to, quote, talk constructively, and results were possible in a matter of days. A Russian delegate also said they'd made significant progress. Kiev's Antonov aircraft plant shelled by Russian forces. The sprawling Antonov plant, which has made some of the greatest jets ever made in the world history. Russian soldiers also attacked a high-rise building along with the plant, killing at least two people as per reports. India has a strong link with Antonov. In 1984, India became the launch customer for its AN-32 military <laughs> Designed to withstand adverse weather conditions, the AN-32s were used to ferry cargo and personnel to every terrain, including the Himalayan frontier. Even now, India operates over 100 AN-32s, which depends on the Antonov plant in Kyiv to upgrade and fly safely. The invading Russian forces had earlier destroyed the biggest plane in the world, the Antonov AN-225 named Rhea, or the Dream in Ukrainian. The Dream jet was hit when parked at the Hostomil airport near Kyiv. The strategic airlift cargo aircraft was designed by the Antonov Design Bureau in the 1980s. Ukraine is a beautiful country filled with bustling cities and many tourist sites. But they have shown you firsthand how this lovely country has been ravaged by war. Once brimming with life and urban settlements, now reduced to rubbles. Here are some before and after images of towns that are now either in ruins or have become ghost towns. Ukraine is also a traveler's paradise. This is one of those last genuine destinations in Europe where you can explore a lot of areas. And this is a tourist paradise, or at least it was when lakhs and lakhs of tourists visited this country earlier. Now, the problem is this country is just struggling to stay afloat amidst the Russian invasion. With cameraman Pavan Kumar in Kiev, Ukraine, Gaurav Savant for India Today. Well, as Russia continues to close in on capital city of Kiev, the fourth round of peace talks have begun. Delegations from both the countries are holding negotiations via video conferencing. Representatives of both the countries have met three times before, including face-to-face -face talks between the foreign ministers, but have failed to yield any results. The only positive outcome of the peace talks has been creating a humanitarian corridor for civilians and brief ceasefire at certain locations. The last round of peace talks took place in Turkey, where the foreign ministers of the two countries met with Turkey's foreign minister mediating the talks. Ukrainian President Zelensky has called for Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett to intervene. The Ukrainian president had said that Jerusalem can be a constructive place to hold Russia-Ukraine talks. India today has spoken to Ukrainian member of parliament Solomia Bobrovska about the fourth round of peace talks and what she really expects from these peace talks. Listen in. Even as Russia and Ukraine attempts at talks and call the, they in fact call it uh, progressive, uh, they are attempting to come to some conclusion at the earliest. Uh, while that said, we hear that President Zelensky has now uh, budged from his adamant stance. Could you elaborate on what have you stepped down on just to end the war? Uh, so first of all, uh, probably today will be the fourth round of the meeting between Ukrainian and Russian delegation. Um, we know that they have um, um, discussions almost every day online, but you have to understand that we could, we cannot step back 
um, and say that we will find compromise on uh, actually on all four um, issues demands from their side that's first of all to recognize crimea as a part of russia that's that's uh, Im impossible what they demand that's to recognize so-called republics luhansk and donetsk being as an independent states that's actually the, the 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 second point which is non 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 can be defined any compromises and of course to just to demilitarize the armed forces uh, the, that's an issue which will kill ukraine and it will be um that will be the suicide without having any battle so i'm not sure that we we will hear before the meeting um the um, from our working group what they're going to to discuss uh but we hope at least that they will um, they will find compromise on humanitarian corridors, which are not um, not effective and not in, in all, especially in Mariupol, where we actually do not have for this almost 15 days of their siege. Um, no one can just uh, leave the town, and nothing can be um, can be can be brought to to the to Mariupol. I think that has to be the issue number one, and we hope. Mariupol will be the, the 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 point to discuss for this for this meeting. Well, that's it from me for the moment. We're leaving you with these top six devastating images of day 19 of the Ukraine war. Stay tuned for a special broadcast with India today's Shivaru.